Well, there goes another week, over the course of which Hurricane Dorian took its slow, slow time rolling through everybody's neighborhood and made its effects on the energy statistics of the world quite known, mainly just in uh, global jet fuel consumption and uh, obviously U.S. jet fuel consumption, but we won't see those numbers until the data release next week. However, the uh, drop in global jet fuel consumption was immediately apparent, whereas last week global jet fuel consumption averaged about 6.2 million barrels per day, and over the course of this week it only averaged 5.8 million barrels per day. The gradual decreases that have been going through in the weeks leading up to this being from all the shutdowns at Hong Kong, and now this sudden drop for this one week coming from essentially the shutdown of all of Florida. But how could that one place cause such a dampening effect, you say? Well, as I explained in last week's video, link up in the corner to that. Please go watch that. Please go watch all my videos, actually. I really need the ad revenue now. As I potentially may no longer have my job next year. But that's a concern for another time. So, Miami, and while well, Florida as a whole is a huge destination, both for people in the U.S. and for people coming from all over the world, a lot of people go to and from Florida every single day. And on top of that, Miami is one of the huge gateway or filter transit hub airports, meaning a lot of flights uh, coming into the U.S. similar to like Los Angeles and New York will come into Miami, and then from Miami, the people get connecting flights to other places inside of the U.S. And don't forget, not everybody lives in stacked apartment complexes right on top of every major international airport. So all of the flights those people would have taken to first get to their major international uh, airport from which they would have flown to Miami, all of those flights now uh, either shut down or the number of them drastically reduces. So you can hopefully see uh, you quickly have a cascading effect worldwide. So, welcome back everybody to another weekly Energy and Resource Update episode. It's me, Max Ogier, again, as always, because there's nobody else here. So as always, we'll be going over this week's energy data releases, discoveries, news updates, oil and gas, minerals, mining, everything that's actually important and forms the foundation of civilization uh, in the background behind everything that common news media tries to insist you is important which is a mixture of everything from Trump's Twitter feed to random sports nonsense. So if you're someone who actually cares about uh, things like this, or someone who is just tired of hearing about the other stuff, then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell part or else YouTube will just ignore the videos and not tell you about them. But subscribe and stick around, because this is definitely one of the places for you. Now actually starting into our weekly data. U.S. oil production dropped back down after getting up to 12.5 again. It's now down to 12.4 million barrels per day. Still, as always, expecting it to get up to 12.8 by the end of the year and expecting the final U.S. production peak to be between 13.5 and 13.8. U.S. oil consumption dropped a little bit down to 21.6 million barrels per day. Now, this data is technically from last week. So the big drop that we're expecting uh, produced by Hurricane Dorian will come from the data that we see next Wednesday. U.S. gasoline consumption came in at 9.47 million barrels per day. Diesel fuel consumption, 4.13 million barrels per day. And U.S. jet fuel consumption for last week, 1.88 million barrels per day. Likely jet fuel consumption of this upcoming week, probably only 1.5, maybe under 1.5. And U.S. Crude oil inventories dropped by almost 5 million barrels over the course of the week, continuing their ongoing decline, oil prices over the week being $54 to $58 per barrel, getting up towards $58 after the inventory data release. U.S. natural gas production almost hit uh, the $104 billion cubic feet per day I've been expecting it to get to before the end of this year, coming in right at one hundred three point nine. U.S. natural gas consumption remained about the same. Its individual numbers split up being heating demand now creeping back up to 9 billion cubic feet per day. Demand from natural gas fired power plants coming in at 36.3 billion cubic feet per day. U.S. natural gas exports 
about 6.3 billion cubic feet per day on average, getting out on LNG tankers, and consumption of natural gas by the pipeline's pumping system itself for its own fuel at 6.4. U.S. natural gas storage inventories are now up to 2.94 trillion cubic feet in storage versus normally this time of year they would be up to 3.02. And last year, which was an extremely high demand winter year, they were still down at 2.56. And natural gas prices are beginning to creep back upwards, climbing from about $2.25 up to just under $2.50 per thousand cubic feet by the end of the week. We had some discoveries this week offshore of northwestern Australia. Actually oil fields this time, not just gas fields with condensate. Totality is likely around 100 million barrels or so, again, thus slowly ticking our total oil discovered this year so far in 2019 from 6.7 up to 6.8 billion barrels. Contrasted, of course, against the 37 billion barrels uh, that we're consuming every year at this point. And the separate nation group uh, that releases their oil production data monthly, apart from OPEC and the regular international data, finally released their data since last video. So we have China still clinging on to their flattened range for the moment between 3.7 and 3.9. Basically coming in almost exactly the same last month and this month, both being about 3.82. Egypt taking a sudden drop down from over 620,000 barrels a day back down to 586,000 barrels a day. Canada taking back up from 4.12 up to 4.18 million barrels per day. Mexico continuing on that terminal decline slope, dropping from 1.7 down to 1.68 million barrels per day. Norway must have had a sudden production outage somewhere, dropping from 1.4 all the way down to 1.3 in just a month. This data specifically, I believe, being from May. So something must have happened back in May that I never heard about. And Russia, only, you know, more than a year after agreeing to the production cuts with the OPEC Plus group, is continuing to actually comply with them and lower its oil production, this month lowering it from 10.83 down to 10.71 million barrels per day. And in another surprise, I was actually able to come across data for one of the countries that I almost could never find anything for. Kenya's oil consumption is now in the triple digits. Kenya has crossed up over 100,000 barrels per day of oil demand and is now roughly at 114,000 barrels per day. All right, and in the metals, terbium dropped uh, $2 down from 684 to $682 per kilogram. Terbium being a critical component of solid state and flash memory, and also being critically necessary for wind turbines. Cobalt is uh, continuing to slowly climb upwards in price again. It had been up towards $100,000 per ton about two years back when the Congo was at one of its more unstable times. But after all that stuff started crawling down, it uh, dropped back down into the 20,000s. However, now it's been really slowly climbing up again. So cobalt's main price driver at the moment is just increasing demand from electric vehicle batteries as electric vehicle production uh, continues to increase. Gold continues to hold above $1,500 per ounce as global gold production from gold mines has not yet peaked, but is likely about to in a couple years. Silver prices uh, were continuing to climb further into uh, alignment with their supply reality, going up over $19 per ounce in the middle of the week, but at the end of the week, they fell back down towards 18. Global silver production peaked back in 2015 and has fallen about 7 or 8% since then. While demand has obviously kept increasing, the primary new driver of which uh, being silver demand for the manufacturing of solar panels. Rhodium prices uh, went right up through that $5,000 per ounce ceiling this week. They got up to about 5050 or so. However, then at the end of the week, they came... Uh, dropping back down, and platinum continues to hold above $900 per ounce, palladium continues to hold above $1,500 per ounce, and among the regular metals, aluminum inventories continued decreasing, dropping from about 930,000 tons in storage down to 913,000, back up over 920, and then at the end of the week down to 918,000 tons in storage. And after the continued decreasing aluminum prices finally started turning around, 
And instead of hanging down towards $1,750 per ton, they started creeping back up towards $1,800 per ton. Nickel inventories basically were flat over the course of the week. They very, very minorly increased, only gaining about 1,000 tons in storage over the course of the entire week, up from 152 to 153. And nickel prices uh, dropped back down below $18,000 per ton and were hanging around uh, $17,900 or so. Lead inventories continued decreasing, down from 78,000 tons in storage to 76,000. Lead prices, again, held in the same range between $2,000 and $2,100 per ton. Zinc inventories continued decreasing as well, down from 68,000 to 66,000 tons in storage. And in response, zinc prices have started actually increasing, jumping up over $2,300 per ton to come into the range of between $2,300 and $2,400 per ton. And finally, one last little metal bit, gadolinium, another rare earth metal, uh, has gone up from $24 to $25 per kilogram. It is the primary magnetic grain encoding component of CDs, DVDs, all that kind of stuff, and is one of the components of the magnetic nanograins used uh, to encode data on hard drive disk platters. Those grains usually being a mix of gadolinium and dysprosium. All right, that's it for this week. I hope everybody enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button. It really helps. Also, if anybody wants to help me specifically, my PayPal is down in the description below. Anyone who gives any amount will get their name carved into a giant chunk of coal. Also, go check out and subscribe to my uh, my aviation channel as well, if you're an aviation nerd as well and you're into aircraft and stuff. Well, that's it for me. I'll see you all around next time.